Hey guys, what's going on? Dominic Arena here, the GOAT, with another YouTube review. Um, this is on Marshall's Acoustic Amp PA Combo, known as the AS50D, the Acoustic Soloist Series. Um, this YouTube video review may run a tad bit long because there's a ton of points I want to uh, run on this. I want to touch base on pros and cons. A lot of videos I've been watching of this amp before I pulled the trigger um, are mostly showing you the tones. I want to go over the features, build quality, and uh, some of the cons on this particular amp. And uh, kind of touch base on some stuff that's not being talked about on the videos. Now, uh, kind of go over it. It is a 50 watt solid state acoustic PA combo. It houses two 8 inch drivers. And uh, it's a beautiful cabinet. It'll show you some of the aesthetics on it. It's got a vintage styling, you know, great build quality to be expected from Marshall. Got the high gloss black amp corners with the gold uh, hardware. Your uh, to be expected brass amp chassis seen on the Marshalls. Classic Marshall logo. I love the gold piping on the front of the amplifier. It's got a real leather handle. It's very heavy duty, very comfortable. Nice hardware here. All the all the nuts and bolts are uh, recessed. They're kind of flush. I like that. Just attention to detail. Now the, uh, the Tolex on this is very heavy duty to be expected from Marshall. I did like the Tolex covering on this better than the Fishman's. The Fishman's have that soft, uh, that soft feel Tolex, and a lot of guys I, I know that are using it are having problems with it tearing. I'm not worried about that on this amp. Now, one thing I don't like is this, the grill cover they're using is very thin. You can see, very easy to push in, very thin, and... Uh, this can be easily snagged, ripped, or punctured when gigging, so you have to be extra careful with the front end of this amp. I wish Marshall would have done something like on the Blues Breaker, used more of that salt and pepper weave, just something that just stands up to, uh, you know, something a little bit more roadworthy, so to speak. Um, we'll show you all the controls. It's a two channel amp. Channel one, you got your guitar input, volume, bass, and treble. Channel 2 has multiple inputs. You have this aux in for, uh, you know, if you're going to run your iPod or something through it for backing tracks. Your uh, balanced XLR for microphone or run a second guitar through it. And then you got your same EQ. Your chorus, let me come down here. Your chorus can be applied to uh, channel 1 or channel 2. You just have to engage it. And it's very shapeable. You can see that uh, you have a speed control and a depth control. Now, what I have found with this is um, I was developing some very harsh chorus tones from the speakers. And uh, basically what that was a result of was if you happen to run these both past 12 o'clock, whether you run them full whatever you may do. If you run both knobs past 12 o'clock, it does develop some harsh chorus tones. And uh, after reading the owner's manual, they state in the owner's manual that uh, whatever knob you run past 12 o'clock, run the other one below it. So if you, like your, if you like a fast speed, run your depth here. If you like a lot of depth, run your speed here. And after doing that, according to what it said in the Marshall book, it, um, it shined better. I was very happy with it. So keep that in mind if you're testing this out in the stores and you have these cranked, that it may make the speaker sound a little harsh. That's because uh, Marshall doesn't recommend it. So running them both at 12 o'clock sounds okay. But if you start getting to some heavy strumming and kind of saturates, and I uh, found myself dialing it back a little bit more. Um, reverb, here's your level to adjust how much reverb you want, and now it's got this balance. So if you leave it at 12 o'clock, it puts the same amount of reverb on both channels, um, or you could fade it to one channel more. So going like that would put it more towards the vocal channel than the guitar, and uh, vice versa. 
If you crank it all the way to one side, it only puts reverb on that channel and nothing on this channel. So that's kind of cool. You could shape it a little bit more. And then over here is your anti-feedback technology. You have a, um, a phase inverter switch, which uh, your, your acoustic guitar may or may not have. And by engaging the notch switch, it allows you to adjust the feedback frequency between 80 and 1,000 hertz. And all you do is you basically dial it in to where the feedback disappears and then leave it. And this amp does an excellent job of eliminating feedback. I thought better than the Fishman Loudbox Mini. The Loudbox Mini only had a phase inverter switch and at louder volumes, it tended to uh, howl a little bit on the guitar. And uh, the mic too, the mic would have a little bit of feedback, but as long as you, you stood away from the amp, that seemed to, uh, to disappear. Now let me show you the back of the amp. Back of the amp, you do have some uh, some outputs. Sorry for the lighting here. You do have an effects loop that you, you send in return for your effects loop. That's cool if you want to run some pedals. Over here, you do have a foot switch and a line out. The line out is for recording, and the foot switch is uh, very cool. Marshall does make a foot switch for it, dedicated for this amp, the AS50D foot switch, and it's it's a two channel, two clicks. It comes in a nice metal housing. Channel one turns on and off your chorus, and two turns on and off the reverb. So I will be picking that foot switch up. I do like that. And then your DI out, this is an XLR out. This is great if you're going to take um, this amp to bigger venues, you know, the 100 person plus venues, and you want to run it into the house PA. What's cool about this DI out is your EQs and your volume does not affect the feed out. So when you plug this into the house PA, um, your the Marshall becomes a, a stage monitor for you. So you can adjust your EQs and your volumes for your personal mix. It's up to the sound guy now to set the volume on the PA and the EQ. But what's cool about it is it does send out the chorus and the reverb. So if you are using your stomp box to uh, turn that on and off, that will be sent to the house PA. I thought that was awesome for bigger gigs. Uh, as you can see, it's a closed back and uh, very, very good build quality on it. I, I like it a lot. Now, one beef I do have with this particular amp is, as you can see, it is a little bit on the bigger side. If you look at some other brands like the Fishman Loudbox Mini, the Troubadour series from Ibanez, all the Roland stuff, they are kind of uh, building their amps around portability and size, stuff that can be thrown into a uh, trunk of a car and just go to the gig. This is a little bit on the bigger side. So it's not heavy. It's about 30 pounds, so it is lighter than most guitar amps, but it is a little bit on the bulkier side. Uh, compared to those uh, 19 pound Fishmans, etc. But the reason why I pulled the trigger on this is because after playing with a ton of them, having the two eights, uh, two eight inch drivers in it, it it took my vocals very well. That was uh, that was a selling feature to me on it because running my vocals and guitar through the Fishman Loudbox Mini, just having that one six and a half inch driver in the dedicated tweeter. When you got up to about 70% on the master volume, it started to overexcurt that speaker and uh, was a little harsh, harsh sounding. This here can take it all day, it's no problem. The only thing is, is this amp does have an emphasis on low end. So if you don't like a lot of bass in your, uh, in your acoustic guitar, you will have to uh, pull the bass out of the mix or maybe adjust it on the preamp of the guitar to make that guitar sing a little bit better. But uh, that's all EQ stuff. That's all up to you guys to, to dial in the correct sound. Um, I really wish Marshall would have included a slip cover and the foot switch because these sell 
This is not a budget amp. It does sell for about 400 bucks or more, depending on the guitar store. So it's not in that $1,000 bracket that you see a lot of the, the line arrays, like the, the Fishman Solo Amp and the Bose. But it is more expensive than the Loudbox Mini by 100 bucks. This being in that class, I would have liked to seen Marshall include a slip cover to help protect it a little bit more when, uh, when on the road, you know, protect this grill a little bit better. I would have liked to see them include the foot switch. My Marshall, or I'm sorry, my Fender came with the foot switch, and it is a very useful tool, especially live playing. You don't have to walk up to the amp and press the buttons manually to turn on and off the chorus, etc. And uh, there is no on and off for the reverb. So if you do want the reverb off, you have to go to the knob, flip it off, address the crowd, tell them the next song, and then flick, flick it back on. So the only way to have that and as a true on and off is with the foot switch. So I will be picking that up for sure. But overall, I'm very happy with it. I've put maybe uh, five hours on it. And um, I'm starting to get it really dialed in, and I'm, I'm enjoying it more and more. It's a great amp. Expect the quality from Marshall. And uh, if you guys want to hear some tones on it, I'm not going to play it just because I'm using a camera phone, and uh, I don't want to saturate the audio and give you, a, you know, give you a shitty demo. But go to Marshall's um, official YouTube channel. And they do a uh, sound demo on this this particular amp, and it's uh, it's recorded very well, so you can hear the choruses and and uh, the different tones on this particular amp. That is it, guys. If you have a question or comment or uh, something I might have missed on this particular thing, definitely hit me up in the comment section, and I will get back to it as soon as I can. And uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this, and uh, please like the video, and uh, take care. Peace out.